So, I mean, but do we really need this stuff to pay for things? Here's why we need it. Okay. Because cash is very dirty. There's a lot of bacteria on dollar bills, cocaine residue. So if you're swiping a phone in front of a, in front of a reader, there's less of a chance that you're going to get tuberculosis. My name is Eric Hazard. My journey in the world of finance has taken me to exotic lands on ambitious assignments around the globe. I've worked with top professionals and immersed myself in the toughest questions facing the industry. I call New York my home now, but I still do my best thinking when I'm traveling. So when it's time to tackle those tough questions, I like to get out from behind my desk and get into the city. That's right. Every November, the New York Financial Writers Association hosts the Financial Follies. The Follies are billed as a black tie fundraiser for journalism scholarships. And this may be true, but everyone in the industry knows the Follies is an opportunity for financial stiffs to tie one on and make fun of each other. To let their hair down and say what they really think. So we thought it'd be the perfect opportunity for Eric to corner some industry folks and see what they really think about fintech. Like, is this whole thing just some sort of fad? When I think about the 90s, I think about dot-com bubble and pets.com using a stock puppet to sell me stocks. Is this just another bubble? So the difference is in the 90s, nobody made any money. Today, these companies actually make a lot of money. In the 90s, nobody had a smartphone. Nobody really cared that much about ads on the internet. They still bought the New York Times on the weekend, or during the week for that matter. Now you don't see that anymore. That's interesting. Right? So if you're sitting on the train drive coming into Manhattan on a, whatever, on a Tuesday morning, there's, you know, there's one physical paper and 97 iPads. I feel like 10 years ago, we talked about, oh, can you trade mobile? Oh, yeah, great, you can. It's physically possible. But who the hell's going to do that? Now people actually do that. Now there's actually hedge fund guys that'll pull out their iPad when they're on the slopes yeah. in Tahoe and they'll make a trade. I would say fintech is absolutely not a fad. Technology is moving every industry forward. Uh, fintech is specifically moving financial services forward. Uh, and it's going to change drastically in the next 15 to 20 years. So I don't think we know all, what all fintech can be yet. For, for, for example, I mean, I do think, I do agree some of it seems like little shiny objects out there um, that are just designed to like grab millennials, but I do think that that's not a necessarily stupid idea. There, she said it. They're considered one of the most self-obsessed generations. From selfies to Snapchats, they are truly engrossed with creating the perfect online profile but completely impatient when it comes to dealing with anything analog. Well, except vinyl and pickles. It would be like so easy to write millennials off, but Forbes has said that by 2017, millennials are slated to spend $200 billion annually, most of which is done on their phones or the internet. And last time I checked, that is right now. Millennials want it fast, convenient, and catered directly to them. They don't even date in person. Why would they bank in person? And all the banks are reacting, some of them slowly, but all of them trying to catch up with what these young, bearded, tattooed guys from San Francisco are doing. The big banks are seeing these people never walk into their stores for their branches to start with. And they're seeing the rate of adoption for some of these um, apps, some of these online investment advisors. It's so fast, they cannot help but react. Right, so is that going to be what, to me, is that the FinTech? Is FinTech then going to adopt more of the technology side and the customer experience? Or is it going to adopt more of the finance side? Well, that is the FinTech's great strength. Uh, if, if we're looking at this unique set of customers, these millennials that have grown up with their mobile phones, that's what the FinTechs do unarguably well. And that's what the banks realize, that they cannot compete on that front. But where they can compete is through the funding and the enormous existing client bases. So the union of that with FinTech is, is really interesting. And you can see with the severeness of the bank's reaction, they're all desperately trying to work out what's the best um, model. Is it buy, build, or partner? Yeah, what do you think? Is it, is it really going to end up being kind of a combination of the two? We've seen combinations, um, JP Morgan, for example, in online lending yeah. with On Deck. I'm not sure how well that's going. I, I think On Deck maybe regrets it. I'm not sure. Who do you think is getting it right? Is there, any, is there a big bank right now that's getting it right? Or is there a I, 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 I don't want to say that, because okay. that sounds like I'm backing a company or another. No. But, but what I will say is that BBVA, the Spanish bank, has partnered, uh, well, has bought um, a bank called Simple, based out of Portland, Oregon. And that seems to me a compelling business model. I mean, they're, they're giving away enormous amounts of stuff for free. At some stage, they're going to have to monetize that freeloading client base. But that, to me, seems to be the way to do it. Yeah. You make a big bet on a, on a particular niche, you pour lots of resources, you spend time getting to know the culture, and then you start to turn the screw. Okay, let's recap. 
One, fintech is not a fad because the dream of the 90s is now reality. Mobile is here and it is now our preference. So much so that, two, millennials won't do anything without their phones. But, three, banks can't move fast enough to keep up with the trends. So they're leaving it to bearded, tattooed guys in Silicon Valley to innovate. Once these guys get buy-in, they'll get bought out. Banks will have innovation, bearded guys will get rich, and we'll be able to, I don't know, what does the future look like? You've got all these different solutions out there. Not every solution is going to survive. Yeah. And not every solution, what it looks like right now, will look like a year, from, you know, you'll have iterations, right? So you have these revolutions, new things come along, but a year from now, two years from now, they're going to look very different. Think about TurboTax and its effect on the accounting profession. That looked like a threat. There will never be an accountant again. Everyone will use TurboTax. There's still Not really. Yeah. There's still accountants, maybe more than ever, and my accountant uses TurboTax. I think digital currencies are definitely going to be something interesting to pay attention to in the future. Cash isn't going anywhere for the moment, but if we're looking 20, 25 years in the future, I think cash is not going to be a thing. I, I think that would be great. I would love to only have my phone with me. Well, why One don't you? thing. Okay. But, but it doesn't work everywhere, right? And there's still places where you need three bucks to buy a cup of coffee, or when it's local merchants and they have to pay a fee back to the credit card company, they don't want to do that. They'd rather you pay them in cash. What can FinTech do to get rid of that fee? Well, so I mean, I guess that's where the, where the innovation should come from, right? Can we make it so the local small business owners who feel like they're getting eaten alive by credit card charges, can they find some way where it's actually they can make more money rather than less by doing all digital? I'm going to go home late tonight. I'm going to need to get in a cab in a tiny little town. They're not going to take a credit card. I need cash. Yeah. Right? So it needs to get cheaper for all those tiny vendors to be able to take digital. Why don't you digital. just take Uber? Then you don't even have to think about it. Uber, the great disruptor. Say what you want about its methods, debate its worth, curse its practices. But one thing we can all agree on, paying for it is seamless. And when we think of successful fintech, we think of Uber. So as a millennial myself, I follow that Uber path, right? So I don't even think about wanting to make a payment. Cash to me doesn't make sense because uh, I grew up in a time with cards. And I think the current generation is going to grow up in a time where digital payments just happen and they're going to expect that. Uber is really the future of this thing because I know it's connected to my credit card, but I don't think at all about paying for something. And I think about getting home. And when it's when Uber started, it felt like, oh, it's an easy way to get a car. But now that Uber is what it is, and sometimes it still takes a couple of minutes, the fact that you don't have to take a, even a credit card or even your phone out at that point, it just gets paid, you get out of the car, thanks, and you get out and you go, that's, that's great. It took a technology company that provides car service to really change the way we pay for things. Yeah, it's amazing, right? It really is. If you can take something that's either boring or incomprehensible and make it beautiful yeah. and, and make people not wish they were dead before they look at it, I would say that's the biggest winner going out. Thank you so much, Josh. Always a pleasure, man. Give me a pound. How's your mother doing? She's good. All Thanks right. for asking. All right.